Welcome back everyone. In this lesson we will specify when Arduino dies and we will destroy the background clones that are created by our, by our instantiate method because we want to keep our things clean and we want to keep our project very neat and simple. The first thing that I said, so Dino dying, will say that Arduino dies every time it touches any obstacle. That's why I have created the separate folder in our sprites just for obstacles because we will add one by one except the bird obstacle and set front player, add collider 2D, resize them, place them behind scene, add, add them tags and add them to prefabs. So this is a lot of work and let's go ahead right away to do it. So add obstacle 1, obstacle 2, 3, 4 and 5th one. Let's select all of them, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, go to Inspector, to Sprite Renderer, Sorting Layer to be Front. Let's also add one Group Collider, so Add Component, Physics 2D, and Polygon Collider 2D. Let's also add them Tag, so go to Tag, Add Tag, click this little plus, and type Obstacle. Hit Save. And then again click on obstacle 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, select all of them and change their tag to obstacle. We can also position them like a group, but I think that won't be very good here, so let's go one by one. First obstacle 1, let's place it behind the scene. We could also resize it a bit, we'll see later if Arduino is able to jump over it. Let's also add obstacle 2 next to it, somewhere here, so we can see if Arduino is able to jump over them. Obstacle 3 also. The 4th and 5th one. Let's separate them a bit more. So we do this just to see if Arduino is able to jump them over, so if they are positioned right and if they are small enough. First one is okay, second one also, third of course, fourth and fifth one. Everything is great, now let's add one by one to our prefabs folder. So obstacle one, drag and drop it to prefabs and delete it from scene. Obstacle 2, place it right behind the scene where it will be spawned. I think it's ok and add it to prefabs. Delete it from scene, do the same for third. The fourth And finally, the fifth one. Okay, great. Now that we have done this, let's go to our script. So open Dino. Since we are dealing with the dead state, we will also add here our animator. We will type private animator, which will be called anim. And let's also add this boolean is dead. So private boolean is dead. Let's initialize it right away to false. And in our start method, we have to say what is anim. So anim equals to get component animator. So let's see our update. So we want to make sure that nothing of this can run if Arduino is dead. So we have to say that if our boolean is that equals false, then everything can happen. And we will do that by typing if is that equals to false, then everything of this happens. And then we go to our uncollision enter 2D. And let's say if our dino enters the collider of our obstacle, we have to say that our dino dies there. So below this if statement, let's type another one. So if 
collision.gameobject with the tag of obstacle then our dino dies we will make a separate method that will be called dino died so we can call it here and that method will be made just underneath the dino jump method so type private void dino died and here let's specify what happens when dino dies so first thing we will say that our boolean is that equals true so it becomes true and let's set our animation to have its trigger here so type anim.set trigger to that okay so what have we done here we said if arduino is dead we cannot jump or run then let's scroll down i'm missing one equals so let's add there so if we collide with any game object that has tag of obstacle arduino dies so what is actually this dino died let's find it so private void dino died it sets our boolean to true meaning that we can't run or jump and our animation plays dead so let's save this let's see if our animation works so click play but we do not have any obstacles so let's add for example obstacle one let's play okay so our our camera is still scrolling but if you zoom we have our dino dead animation so that is okay but we still have to stop our background so let's find our scroll camera and let's say if our dino died this cannot execute we will do that by typing if game object dot find let's find object that is called dino so open the parenthesis open the quotation marks and type dino dot get component so here we type the script name which is also dino then we use the boolean is that equals to false so what we said here to find game object called dino which has this component that is script that is also called dino and find this condition is that to be false and then if that's true we can allow all of this to happen so i have an error on is that it happens because it is inaccessible due to its protection level meaning that it's private so i have to go back to dino find this is that boolean and change it to public save it now go to scroll camera and as you can see we do not have any errors anymore we can add brackets here but we do not have to i will do it just in case let's save it and let's go back to unity to see how it looks like okay great our camera stops moving everything stops when our dino does i can't jump i can't run and there is that animation on the dino next thing i said we should do is destroy the clones of the background that we have so when you play it you see that we just keep adding and adding these clones four five and sixth one and this will go to god knows how many of them so we have to destroy some of them we will do that by adding destroy background script so first let's create it right click create c sharp script call it destroy background add it to our scripts folder and also let's add it to our background in prefabs now it is attached on the prefab and it is also attached to this background in the scene so let's open the script so because our camera is moving we can use that we can say that everything our camera has passed so everything to its left can be destroyed so we can say if x position of the camera passed the length of the background which is let's say 20 roughly we can destroy that game object we do not need start method we just need one private float which will be camera x position so type camera x pass 
and in our update method, we'll say that camera exposition equals to camera dot main dot transform dot position dot x. This is how you can access the position of the main camera from any script. So just type camera dot main and access any of its value. So we will say if camera exposition is bigger than the transform dot position x plus let's say 20, then destroy game object. So transform position x is the x value of our background and it is attached to every background and 20 is roughly the size of the background, the length of the background actually. So let's save this and let's go back to Unity to see how it looks like. Okay, great. This looks excellent. So we have two or three backgrounds running. Everything to the left gets destroyed. And this is it for our current lesson. The next lesson will be spawning of obstacles.